Hello, fellow developers. Welcome to this new SAP Tech Bytes video. And today we'll have a closer look at one of the most critical UIs for SAP users, the SAP Fiori Launchpad. Or to be more precise, the SAP Fiori Launchpad on SAP BTP. As you can see in the small preview box below, we'll write a Node.js application that you can use to trigger notifications in the Fiori Launchpad. And the cool thing is these notifications will be displayed next to notifications from other systems, such as an S4HANA system. And the notifications can not only update the user on critical items, but also provide a direct navigation path from the notification to the Fiori application that it originates from. And you can go even further. Notifications allow you to interact directly with business entities that you can, for example, approve or reject items from the notification so that business users don't have to open the Fiori app thems itself. In this short video, you'll learn how to build a Node.js application to send notifications, but we'll only make use of HTTP endpoints. So you could use the programming language of your choice for this project as well. Okay, let's roll. So if you wanna code along, that's perfect. And you can either like watch the, this video and follow along or also open the blog post that you see right here that actually contains also some background information and all instructions that you need to follow to achieve the same result. It also contains all the links, for example, the link to this GitHub repository with this uh, runtime Fiori MTA sample. That is basically a Fiori app that we will clone and deploy to have a Fiori app to get started from, to work our scenario around it. And basically this Fiori app will be the sender of the notification. So if the user clicks on the notification in the SAP Fiori launchpad later on, that it this will trigger that our application will be opened. So let's jump over here to the instructions. Let's just copy the git clone command, switch over to the SAP Business Application Studio, open a new terminal, and execute the git clone command and you see the files will be downloaded here in our projects folder. In the next step, let's open a new workspace just to open this one project that we care about in the scenario here in a dedicated workspace. And then let's run npm install and the build and deploy command from here as well. This will take a while, so I skip forward so you don't have to watch what's happening here. Okay, now, so this finished here. In the next step, we need to make sure that the notifications are enabled for our SAP Fiori Launchpad or for the SAP Launchpad service. For that, let's go to the BTP trial account or free tier, depending on what, you, what you're using. Let me move that up here and let's go to services, instances and subscriptions and click the SAP, on the SAP Launchpad service instance that you already created or if you haven't created it, it you can do this now. So open here. And here now you need to make sure that when you go to the settings and you go to notifications that they are enabled and that you see the secret and the client ID here. Once you see them, you can jump over here to documentation, accept the cookies. And basically this guide will show you how you can enable the notifications, how you can use them and how the destination should look like. That's important. You have to have a destination that has the name SAP underscore notifications. So when I go over here to connectivity, destinations, and I filter for notifications, you see basically I have such a notification destination here. That's good. Then additionally, when you go to all your launch pads, you also have to go to the setting of each individual launch pad that you wanna enable destinations in and make sure show notifications is enabled. If it isn't, you can click on edit and toggle the button here. 
So that's all good for me. Let's come to the fun part. For the fun part that actually helps us to send notifications from SAP Business Application Studio to the Fiori Launchpad, we need to simulate two service bindings, one for the Access UAA service and two for the destination service. Luckily for us, both service instances have already been created when we deployed this Fiori sample application. So the only thing that we need to do now is to create service keys for the service instances and download them to local files. Let's do that with these commands that I just copied from the before mentioned blog post. And then I just go back to the root folder of the project and create a new directory that I call send notifications. And then let's just open a new workspace for in this folder, create a default nth.json file. And this file would basically help us to simulate the service binding with the service keys that we created before. In here, you just drop a file based on the template from the blog post. So actually, it will have a different instance name and instance good, but that doesn't matter. What is important is that you insert your service keys in the credentials field in here for the destination service and in here for the access UAA service. And that's actually enough to mimic the, the system, the source binding. So in step two, we are going to build an abstraction layer. And this abstraction layer will abstract away the HTTP calls to the destination. So let's create a new YouTube folder, create this notification api.js file in here and let's drop this file here. Let's briefly discuss what this file does. So it uses the cloud SDK to basically get destinations and get the cross-site request forgery header and execute HTTP requests. And it basically does all of that for the destination with the name SAP notifications. That's the one we created before, correct? And it sends data to the specific endpoints of this destination, to this notification endpoint and to the notification type service endpoint. And all these functions basically just abstract these HTTP calls. And what they expose is a JavaScript class with multiple methods that can be used to get all notifications, to create a new notification or to post, uh, sorry, to create notifications types to get notification types and to create new notifications. And you probably wonder, okay, so we're using SAP Cloud SDK Core, but did we define that yet? No, we didn't. So let's do that in the next step. Let's create a new package.json file in here. And this package.json file, sorry, should be in the on the root level. And that defines the dependencies and the name of the project and the start script. So all of that is what you see in these 11 lines here. Then in the next step, let's create the domain notifications JavaScript file. This file makes use of the abstraction of the notification API, but it will basically provide some domain knowledge like what, how are the domains structured? What is the version of the current uh, notification type? So we can upgrade notification types later on if you want to change the template, for example, and other properties. Let's copy the file from the blog post in here. Note that it defines multiple properties such as the language code in which notifications are displayed, I already mentioned notification type key and notification type version. I uh, don't want to go in detail for all these other properties here. Just know that you can find information on them in the documentation if you are curious. One thing that is important is, for example, this uh, target action and target navigation target object because this defines the Fiori app 
that will be opened when the user clicks on the notification. And all the rest is pretty straightforward. And at the end, this JavaScript file exposes one function that you can call to create a new notification. When a new notification is about to be created, this function will first check, did I already create a notification type? And if not, it will create this notification type before the notification is created. And with that, we got almost everything in place. So let's get to the core part here. Let's create this create.js file that will trigger the notification for our user. This is a pretty short file that will include the function of the file that we just created, use Axios to basically make HTTP requests to get data from the North Wine source on products, and then it filters which products are low on supply and which one of these belong to category six. And then it will basically create one notification per product of this category. And it will send all of the notifications to my email address that you don't see below here. Obviously, in your case, you should add the email address you used for your SAP BTP account in here. And at the end, it prints a success message. So let's do the fun part here. Let's call npm install to download all the dependencies. And then let's call npm start to trigger the notification. But before we can call npm start, we need to make sure that the Fiori app that we already deployed is actually included in the Fiori launchpad. I'll do that very fast now. If you know how to do it, you probably can follow the flow. If you don't know how to do it, check out the video that you see in the top right corner now that will explain you all the details. Ta-da, and if we are here now, you see there is an available product tile that you can click on to basically open the Fiori Elements application. Let's select all available columns, hit go to actually fetch data from our backend. Okay, let's go back to the main screen here of this launchpad. Let's trigger the creation of this destination. And now you see a success message here. Let's go over to the Fiori launchpad and on here, you see there is a new notification. And when I click on it, it opens our application. Awesome. And just like that, you've sent your first notification to the SAP Launchpad service or the SAP Cloud Portal service. As I mentioned before, most of the instructions can be found on the linked blog post that you can also find in the description box. And if you have questions about the instructions or about anything around the topic, feel free to join the discussion in the comment section under the blog post. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna stay up to date around all topics of SAP development, then make use of the like and subscribe button below the video. See you next time.